Hello, how are you? Oh, good, thanks. How are you doing? Pretty good. Um, thanks for thanks for volunteering to be here today and to talk about life as a front-end engineer. And uh, yeah, maybe you can tell us, there's the little like teaser, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about yourself. What, what do you do, a little bit about your background, your expertise? So yeah, my name is Jenny. Um, I work as a front-end software engineer at Singtera. Um, I've been at Singtera for about 11 months now. Um, and I work with uh, the UX designers and other engineers on the team um, to pretty much design everything that you see on the client side on our applications. Um, and before that, I was working at TD for about three years as a full stack engineer. Awesome. And you know that I'm all about skills and skill building. And one of our skills, the very, very first skill that is the most important is how do we learn? Because once we figure out how we learn, then we can learn everything else. Tell me what you, you did the PLP and what did mm -hmm. you find in the, in the results? So I found in the results that I kind of fell in between quadrant two and quadrant three. Um, and the best way that I learn is by doing, like actually experiencing um, the new thing I'm trying to learn and by having an expert kind of teach me, which I think aligns pretty closely with how I usually try to learn things. Like on the job, I definitely prefer like just attempting to do something, even if it takes me a little bit longer than reading through. I think that it sticks more when I actually try to like execute a new thing by myself. Um, or I also prefer to just talk one-on-one -on -one with someone who's maybe more senior at the job when they can like walk me through things and we kind of do it together. Um, so yeah, I found that those align pretty well with like how I've been learning on the job thus far. And is that any different from like the school book learning? Like when you went, maybe when you were in school, was that like, did you find, do you find that there's any difference between learning on the job now and what the school learning was? Definitely. I found um, in school, like I got my bachelor's in computer science. So a lot of that was just sitting in lectures for like three hours. And then you'd maybe have an hour of lab time a week. And I found the labs to be a lot more beneficial to my learning just because that was a time when you could actually sit down and like try out these concepts and get advice one on one from the TAs. Like when it came to sitting in lectures and listening, it would be pretty hard to like actually keep the plot up and like kind of know what was going on. Like a lot of times I'd have to find myself like going home and trying out things like on my own time, like just getting taught and like having to read paragraphs wasn't as helpful for me at all. So I think learning on the job is a lot better for me just because I actually you usually are just trying out new things. Like you'll get assigned a new task and just like start trying it out right away rather than like reading a chapter of a book. So in that way, I find it a little better. Well, it might be reassuring to a lot of people who are struggling through uh, some lectures where they're like, oh, I didn't think this was, I thought it was gonna be more hands-on. Definitely. So stick with it until you get to the job. Exactly. Um, awesome. Okay. And so what do you think are your strengths? I think um, one strength that I've found, especially working in this like remote first environment we found ourselves in since COVID is communication, like written and verbal. Um, I've always been someone who likes talking to people and connecting with people. And I've never, I kind of underestimated how important that skill is like in a tech job. Like there's so many times in my day when I have to like explain what I'm working on to someone and explain what help I need from them or even just like figure out requirements. It's a lot of communication. I think that skill I definitely find comes a little easier to me um, just from practice. I think that's kind of how that develops. Um, and I think I'm also pretty good at like in general kind of teamwork and having empathy for other people on my team. Um, I try to always kind of keep track of what everyone else is working on. And if anyone needs help, I really try to like reach out to them, see if I can assist in any way, because that kind of goes both ways. If you're going to help people on your team, they're more likely to help you out, keeps everything running more smoothly. Well, okay. So this is interesting. Let's, let's maybe debunk a myth because, you know, there is a myth about or a stereotype around software engineers as being like maybe basement dwellers, people who live in the dark, <laughs> who game in their spare time and uh, really maybe don't have the strongest of all communication skills, but are super brain powered. Where, like, how how true is this? True? Is there any truth to it? Is there, you know, is it changing? Do you feel like the industry is like changing a little bit? What's your take on that? Yeah, I think it definitely. I can't say for sure if it's changing because I've only been in the field for less than five years. But I think in my experience, I've definitely noticed that the best engineers I've worked with are the ones who also like have 
super good communication skills and are really able to talk through what they're doing and use a lot of analogies and metaphors that make it clear to someone who maybe doesn't have that like super technical knowledge that they do. Um, I think a lot of times people do overlook that and they think that getting a job in tech is just like knowing how to code perfectly, knowing how to nail all those interview questions. But a huge part of it is just being able to talk through how you're thinking, how you approach, approach the problem and just be able to get help and like figure out what's going on from a lot of different perspectives. So yeah, I think communication is a really key part of it that a lot of people don't fully realize. But for me, it's definitely like probably the number one skill I use every day. Interesting. So not the typical, not our typical kind of gamer software engineer. Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. So, and if we move into some of these skills, can you talk about like failure in the workplace or in, you know, on the job? How do you deal with failure? How, how does that kind of come up for you? And is there an example that you could share with us about how, what you learned from, uh, from an experience that didn't go the way that you hope, hoped it would? Yeah. I do have one experience that comes to mind um, from my previous job when I was pretty new in the job. I think I'd maybe been working there like under a year. Um, I've been working on this big feature for months and it was like a really big thing. Like it took a really long time because I had to go back and forth with members of the team and like we all kind of had to figure out the requirements and get it done. So it finally shipped out to production. I was super excited. And then one day later, we found out that something had gone terribly wrong. A lot of things were breaking, like there were just alerts firing everywhere. And this also happened around 4 p.m., like the week before Christmas. So it was just awful timing. So many people were out of office. It was really stressful. And I felt like it fell mostly on my shoulders because in my mind, I was like, I made this feature, like this is horrible, this is so stressful. Um, but it was not as horrible as I had imagined it would be being an experience. Like the rest of my team really stepped up and they helped me figure out what was going on. We all stayed late together to work through it. Um, and that was another place where communication was super important because I had to like explain to all of them what the feature was, why I thought this was happening. And they all communicated what they thought was happening as well. We were able to narrow it down um, and just see bug it together. And that also taught me a lot about the importance of just like not blaming your team and not feeling that guilt either. Like just anything that goes wrong is like a team responsibility and it doesn't really fall just on your shoulders. Um, and if you have that respect for your coworkers and your teammates, like these big horrible catastrophes that happen won't be as awful as you fear they are because they have your back. Um, yeah, so I learned a lot. I learned to do better testing <laughs> and just to like not stress as much. Obviously you don't want these things to happen, but it's inevitable in the job. So as long as you have good people on your side, it won't be as bad as you fear. Here's like a, just a wild card question. Um, have you ever have you ever felt um, imposter syndrome? I know that a lot of people talk around. I mean, it's hard because there's like a lot of people in your field with a lot of expertise. You'll be working with people who are really top of their game. How how have you ever felt that? And if so, how might you have dealt with that or tackled it or kind of over you know worked your way through it? Yeah, a thousand percent. I think, like you said, it's definitely really common in this field. And I think in a lot of STEM, a lot of people suffer from imposter syndrome. And for me, it's definitely something where like every, every so often on the job, you'll come across a problem that's just so hard and you'll be so stuck. And then sometimes you'll bring it to someone else who figures it out in like one minute. And that could just be because they've looked at the code base before. It could be like they just encountered this problem before, but it still makes you feel so unintelligent and just so less than that. It's like very depressing and I found like earlier in my career when I felt that way I would just kind of like shut down like if that happened at like 2 p.m like that was it for my work day I'm just like I'm too sad like just kind of reflecting and just feeling really bad and now the way that I kind of get around it in that scenario is just to ask the person in detail like how they figured out the answer and kind of talk through it and that kind of makes me feel better because it's like flipping the situation into one that makes you feel like guilt or shame and turning it into a learning experience to kind of distract you and to also like make it so that next time you're the one that can fix it in one minute. Um, but it does, it is something that still creeps up. Like even when you have like 20 years of experience, I think there's always going to be someone that maybe knows that one thing you don't and still gets those feelings of guilt in your mind. But I think just trying to put a positive spin on it whenever possible is like the way that I found to kind of deal with it. Well, it speaks, that speaks volumes to like the early, the earlier conversation about learning because that, that's entirely the growth mindset. Right. Being able to take that and say, like, you know what? Clearly, nobody knows everything. Yeah. 
and it's a you know it can be kind of you know you can feel vulnerable maybe taking that mask off and saying like you know what actually I don't know the answer like can you help but that's like uh, and then diving into it and being able to ask for help and being able to like you know reach out to people is definitely like a core part of a growth mindset which I think just makes people happier mm -hmm. like when you don't feel yeah. like you have to know the answer to everything definitely no one knows everything it might feel like that sometimes when you're the one who has no idea but it's just not the case yeah yeah it's a relief to find out that not everybody people like nobody knows everything right exactly for sure <laughs> um okay so here another question have you ever felt like you were in you got to a plateau maybe in what you were learning and you had to kind of push through and get to that next level and if so how did you do that yeah I felt that um in my previous role a little bit because I was there for quite a few well three years so like a little bit of time um and I've been working on the same project that entire time and I kind of started to feel like I really understood what I was working on that particular piece of code I was looking at every month like I'm like I get this so I took some time um to talk to my manager at the time and just say like hey I think I need to like start learning new things because that's also a very important part of the tech career in general like things are changing so fast mm -hmm. it's really important to keep your skills up and just to keep your knowledge like as high up as it can be so I had that conversation and he found some really good um like training resources for me um and he also found another team that needed like a little bit of help with their project for a couple months so I joined that team temporarily and came back and I thought that was really helpful. Like learning on your own is really good. Um, like just watching like tutorial videos and things like that, like finding whatever way you can learn. But I think also just joining a new team and like working with new people can also teach you a lot. Like just having those different personalities on your team for a little bit can really change it up. So it was kind of just a matter of like finding a way to mix it up and have exposure to new things. So I found that to be really helpful. Awesome. Uh... Okay, so then if we get a little bit deeper into the skills, what skills do you think are critical? And when we're talking about, there's obviously the tech skills, but what criticals, what soft skills do you think are critical um, in, as a software engineer? Yeah, like I've been continually saying, I think communication is a huge one. Um, that's just the only way to really impart knowledge on other people, especially in this remote environment. Um, it's really important just to make sure everyone knows like what's going on with your code, just to like, keep educating your team members um, and having a really good, strong way to work with other people, having a good sense of teamwork is also super important. Um, like I feel that working in tech is a lot like working on a group project in university. Honestly, that's probably the most similar experience I had before being on the job. So if you think of it in that context, like it's very important to always be in communication with your team, always be assigning tasks to other people and making sure you're all working on your individual piece of the project. Um, and the last skill I would say is really valuable is just like organization, like being able to kind of keep track of the tasks that you have, keep track of what you will be able to complete in the next week. Like, I find that I work so much better when I have kind of like a mental list of what I need to get done in that day and that week, that month, just because you always feel like you're progressing. You don't really feel unproductive and you also don't feel as overwhelmed when you kind of have that map set out for you. Awesome. Uh, the last thing I was going to ask you about uh, was if you have, so if you had, we talked about one, what, one skill, maybe one skill that you think is really important in this area, and then maybe three concrete tips for how somebody can um, work on building this skill. Yeah, definitely. I think one interpersonal skill that I find really valuable in my work day is just kind of being able to check in with yourself and see how you're feeling throughout the day, because a really common issue in our field is burnout, where people just find themselves with so much to do or they're not checking in properly and they just like want to finish that feature or meet that deadline and they'll just keep working until they physically can't anymore. And it's really not a good place to be because it can really set you back in your career and even in your life. So some tips I have to prevent that that I use is just having things outside of work like hobbies or other interests that will kind of pull you away from your desk at the end of the day and make sure you're achieving that balance so for example I like to sign up for workout classes at like 5 30 p.m and then I know like okay I'm going to be done work by 5 30 because I have something else to go to um I think a second way um to avoid burnout and really check in with yourself is just even like to do like meditation or just to like kind of take yourself away from the screen take and like just make sure you have time to think about how you're feeling um 
And the third tip to get rid of burnout, I think goes back to what I was saying before about how organization can be really important. Um, it's really good to kind of have a list of tasks that you know you can achieve in a day. And if you find that your list is getting longer and longer, it's really important to talk to your team or your manager and just say like, hey, there's too much on my plate right now. And I know that if I were to actually complete all this work, it wouldn't be the quality that I know I can produce because there's just too much. There's not enough time in my day. And I don't want to start like producing worse work because I don't have enough time and I'm not as calm. So I think that's really important. Just making sure at the end of the day that you're not stretching yourself too thin and you're still achieving balance so that you can keep performing really well at work and in your personal life as well. Yeah. Burnout is something that we all need to, um, you know, I think prevent, uh, obviously we need to prevent it, but we need to yeah. build our skills in terms of, uh, helping to, um, create more healthy boundaries. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Jenny, thank you so much for talking to me today. I really appreciate it. And for busting all of these stereotypes about software engineers and wishing you all the best in the rest of your career. You too. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Thanks, Jenny. Bye.